Good morning and welcome to our Pentecost celebration. It's the 31st of May and today we are going to have a little party. You see, it's Pentecost and I'm hoping you got the memo that I sent out on our social media accounts that says grab yourself some cake, find a cup of tea or something in your favourite mug and let's gather around our screens knowing that together we are celebrating the birth of the church and the coming of the Holy Spirit. We're going to think today about Acts chapter 2, the story where the Holy Spirit comes and empowers God's people to be a family, a family of love, a family where amazing things happen in Jesus' name and a family that is never alone because God's Spirit is with us. So let's celebrate with cake, let's celebrate with worship, let's celebrate by digging into God's word and let's celebrate by inviting the Holy Spirit to come and meet us even in our homes. So I'm going to ask you to do something a little bit strange as we start now. I'd like you to stand up if you're able and get yourself ready to worship. God by his spirit is with us in every one of our homes right now. So I'm going to invite you to stand and perhaps raise your hands in worship or open them up. And let's invite God to meet us. Lord, we become aware of your presence right now. And we are going to sing your praise for you are for just leading us in that one song. We're going to have some more worship a little bit later on as we respond to what God is saying to each of us. Now's your moment though to grab yourself some cake, grab your cup of tea and we're going to uh, hear God's word today read to us by the garlands and then Simon's going to lead us in soap. So you might also want to find yourself a piece of paper and a pen or your journal or something that you usually write in uh, because we're going to listen to God through his word and hear what his voice is saying to us today. Over to the garlands. This reading is from Acts chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. 
Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people were all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking their own native languages. Here we are, Parthians, Meds, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean? They asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, they're just drunk, that's all. It's uh, absolutely fitting that we should think about Pentecost as being a party, a great celebration. It was the birthday of the church. And often we think of the church as being weak and marginalised and disconnected from the rest of society. But the global truth is that the church is stronger and more alive than it's ever been. Today, more people will join the church of Jesus Christ than at any other time during its 2000 year history. It's been an amazing story. And as we look at Acts chapter two this morning, we look at the beginnings, how it all started and this explosion of God's movement through those early disciples began to take place. We're going to use soap this morning. Scripture, observation, application, prayer. I'm going to be encouraging you not to sit passively and receive what I offer, but I want to invite you with me to look at the scriptures together and allow God to speak. Soap is a tool that we've been using for a decade now at Burlington since 2010 when we read and I preached through the whole Bible in a year and we began to use soap as a, as a simple way of hearing God speak for ourselves from his word and going on to put it into practice. So grab your Bible or your phone or your tablet, uh, have Acts chapter 2 open in front of you now and follow it with me that you might either for the first time or for the 100th time uh, use this tool of soap to allow God to speak to you through the scriptures. Scripture, observation, application and prayer. So we begin as we come to Acts chapter 2 and if we were doing this in our, or if I was doing this in my, in my own quiet time, I, I would be reading perhaps one, two, three times through the passage slowly. And I'd be looking to see what jumps out at me. What, what does the Holy Spirit underline? What, what am I drawn to in my spirit? All those are different ways of perhaps me trying to tease out what God wants to say to me. So I, I'm going to give you six, six uh things that might grab your attention this morning. Uh, they're not the only six that are in the passage, there are plenty more and uh, you feel free to grab the one that's for you today. But here are six just as an illustration to help you get into the way that this might work in your daily devotions and uh, Bible reading. So Acts chapter 2 and verse 1, we read that when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. What does it mean that they were all together? Does it literally mean that there was no such thing as lockdown and they were physically all together? Yes, it does mean that. But probably so much more. We know that they were united in prayer. So they were together in their commitment to follow Jesus. They were together in their longing for his mission to be extended and to begin. So it, it, it it just makes me begin to think, who am I together with and what is our togetherness about and what is our togetherness as a Burlington family for? So you get the idea. I might begin with the scripture 
and then I might begin to observe what the scripture is saying and begin to tease out why it was speaking uh, to me. Second example is just there in, in verse 2. It says, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. <laughs> Do you notice that word house? We're all in our homes, aren't we, right now? We might be tempted to think that this great move of God that's gone on for 2,000 years, unstoppable, began in a cathedral or in a monastery or in some great chapel but no we read it began in a house when the Holy Spirit came on ordinary believers in a house that thrills me with hope about the possibilities of the Holy Spirit coming and filling our homes and so maybe you're drawn to that this morning and you begin to to observe what that scripture saying then and what might it be saying to me or to us now. Then a third example in verse 3, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them, it says, were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. The Spirit came and rested on each of them and all of them were filled. Maybe that, that emphasis strikes you this morning. The Holy Spirit was not given for the chosen few or for some special Christians. The Holy Spirit was given to each one. Every believer was given the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you cannot, and I cannot say I am excluded. It didn't include me. God is using other people, but he's not wanting to use me. The Holy Spirit was given to all of the believers, to each one, this tongue of fire representing the Spirit came and rested on them and all of them were filled and began to speak in other tongues. Fourthly, verse 6, when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Maybe that's what grabs your attention this morning, that when the Holy Spirit came, his primary purpose, his primary objective was to help believers communicate the gospel in a language that people could understand. Each one heard them speaking in their own language. What does it mean for me to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that I can speak the good news of Jesus in a language, in a context that people around me can understand for themselves. And then fifthly and sixthly, fifthly you'll notice in verse 9 that there's a whole list of the people who heard the gospel being spoken in their own language. Parthians and Medes and Alamites, residents of Mesopotamia and so on. It goes on for two verses just listing all the different people. And maybe that's what strikes you this morning, that the Holy Spirit was given to all the believers so that people of all nations, all people groups, might hear the gospel being proclaimed, being spoken in a way that they can understand. Perhaps that, as you reflect on that, makes you begin to think about where you would love to see people understand the gospel. What people group, whether it be older people or, or young mums at the school gate or youth and teenagers or your neighbours or your work colleagues. Who are the people? What nation, as it were, are you longing that they would hear and understand? And as the Holy Spirit has been given to you, what part might you play in that? And then finally, verse 10, some, however, made fun of them and said they had too much wine. Ever since the beginning, Christians have faced mockery, but it was these early disciples that stood up to be counted, even though they were going to be laughed at and jeered at, that began this unstoppable movement of Jesus that we call the church. So those are six things that might have caught your attention as you read that passage in your quiet space. And as I said, there may be others. Scripture, 
observation. When, when you know what the scripture is, when the, the particular thing that the Holy Spirit is, is grabbing your attention about, then it's time just to rest with it, to observe it, to meditate on it, to ask questions about it. Is this a principle? Is it a promise? What did it mean for those first people hearing it? What might it mean for me today? And so as you just settle on it, rest on it, ask questions about it, as you observe it, so you begin to understand what for you the application might be. Scripture, observation, application. The application is what does this word mean for you today? Observation is what it meant to those people who first heard it. Application is what does it mean for me today? How will I think differently, act differently, behave differently in the light of what I sense God is saying to me in this particular verse? S-O-A-P, SOAP, Scripture, Observation, Application, Prayer. If we're going to step into what God is saying, then we will always need to pray. And so if you look at bullington.church and forward slash soap, uh, we talk there about this particular tool and how you can use it to write a, a journal, a daily journal that helps you to be nourished and fed from the word of God every single day, helping you to hear what he's saying and to do something about it. So what about today? What about Acts chapter 2? on this Pentecost Sunday. What is the phrase or the verse that you've been drawn to, even as I've been talking? What is it? It's easy to sit on these calls uh, uh, passively, just like we'd watch an episode of something. But I, I'm asking you just, just to pause and think, well, what in those verses is, is real, is living, is alive for you today? What's God saying? to you this morning and what are you going to do about it? I realise that on this live stream we can't pause for an extended period of time as we perhaps we might if we were all in the same room together. So, so maybe you just need to jot down the, the essence of, of where or what you think God is, is saying to you. Maybe if you, if you know already you can begin to add them into the comments to encourage other people. But maybe you need to set aside some time a bit later on today just to think about this verse that's come alive to you this morning and what you need to do about it, what your application is. The Holy Spirit came to believers in a home and the Holy Spirit came on each one of them and as a result, every group of people, every nation heard the gospel in their own language. What an incredible thing. And even though many jeered, we know that the Lord added 3,000 to their number that first day. And it all started in a home as the Holy Spirit came. Becky's going to lead us just in a, a time of worship, a sung worship, uh, just leading us as we seize this opportunity now, using the time of worship to invite the Holy Spirit into our homes today, into our lives this morning. And even in your house and mine, an unstoppable movement can begin that sees many lives change. So let's invite the Holy Spirit to be welcome to be present in our homes and in our lives as we celebrate today the birthday of the church, this unstoppable movement that's stronger and more alive today than it's ever been in its 2000 year history. Happy Pentecost Sunday. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit as we worship him.
it's so great when God speaks. I'm really hoping you heard him clearly today. The challenge now is to do what he asks of us. We've heard his voice. Let's go and live it and do what he is asking us to do this week. There are a number of opportunities uh, over this week to uh, gather together in one way or another. As I've said, it's Pentecost and so tonight we're going to gather with many churches from all over the town online. We would usually worship together on Pentecost Eve and we would usually pray blessing on our town. Well, we're still going to do that. So I'd love you to join me and many others from across Ipswich uh, to watch the virtual service. You will find it at Network Suffolk dot online dot church and you will be able to go there at seven o'clock and there will be a time of worship a time of prayer and a message about praying blessing on to Ipswich today and into this year Tomorrow we'll be back uh, worshipping together on Zoom at 9.30 in the morning uh, uh, all of the details are on social media we'd love to see you there and then again on Thursday there's an opportunity if you're a lady to pray with others do contact us at info at burlington.church and we can send you the zoom links uh, for you to join that ladies prayer night next Sunday we will be uh, back here on Facebook and it's the first Sunday of the month so as we always do we will be sharing communion together so grab some uh, bread and wine or squash and cracker, whatever you can, uh, ready for that time together. And we will share communion one with another across the Wi-Fi waves. We want to thank everybody for their continued generosity. Um, everything that we are able to do is because of our church family being so generous in uh, giving money in whatever way they feel able. You can still continue to give through this time, uh, perhaps in the ways you normally do, but also through burlington.church forward slash giving, where all the information on how to give can be found. We're hugely grateful for your generosity through this time. So that's it. We've had a wonderful time being together. It's been great to see all your comments and uh, uh, your shares and your likes. Keep them coming. It's so wonderful to interact through the comments stream together, to know that we are all worshipping uh, together. So do say goodbye now to everyone through the comments. And as you go into this week, may you know God's blessing in your life. May you know God's provision. And may you know that the Holy Spirit is in you. So you can go and live an extraordinary life in the power of God. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt to reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation jesus for our sake you died
the King of Kings.